You gotta keep the bills paid or else you won't survive. You won't have nowhere to live. You won't have no food. You won't have no lights. Everything that you make is accounted for already. I want better and I work for it, but I just don't get anywhere with it. Most people are not aware of it, but poverty is actually as bad as it's ever been and getting worse. You're seeing rising occurrences of homelessness. You're seeing families that are literally one paycheck away from being out in the streets. People think people without money, that they must have done something to deserve it. And I find exactly the opposite. They're usually vulnerable because of us, because of choices governments have made. The National Center for Law and Economic Justice works at the intersection of civil rights and poverty. We look at where we can change structures, where we can take on fundamentally unfair practices. We have a long history of using impact litigation, policy, and support for grassroots organizing to advance low-income communities. Poor people are left out of really the American dream unless there's somebody to stand up and fight for them, and that's what the National Center has done. Four main issues that NCLEJ focuses on include access to social safety net programs, supporting low-wage workers, consumer debt issues. Another component is supporting persons with disabilities. We've been operating for more than 50 years. If there's a way we can make a difference, we're going to get into it and we're going to try to make a difference. I don't know where we'll be sleeping tonight. I don't know where we'll be sleeping tonight. Buffalo is the third poorest city in the nation. In Erie County, over one third of the people are on food stamps. Life's not great when you're receiving food stamps, but it's better than the alternative, which is nothing at all. I've worked my whole life. Since I was 18, I've always worked. You know, I had a stroke and I have to come here and apply to support my children right now until I could find a job. What we found in the counties that our office serves is that the local governments have been turning people away to entitlements they desperately need. Cash assistance, food stamps, and Medicaid. The homeless are so consumed with their own day-to-day -day survival and needs that they can't be their best advocate. We talked to one woman who was a domestic violence survivor who had to leave the home with her three kids. She went to the Department of Social Services and she was turned away. We were collecting these stories, but we really didn't have the resources to deal with this in a systemic way. So we called up the National Center for Law and Economic Justice, and we eventually filed class litigation. And it really dramatically improved the assistance rates. We were able to get good policies in place. We were able to get a federal court consent decree that stopped some of the worst behavior. And it's now night and day. My grandfather used to tell me some of the stories about when he was a farm worker, and I couldn't believe that some of the conditions that he faced, that, you know, they were real. But then when I was a farm worker myself, I got to experience some of the very same conditions that my grandfather had described. Long hours from Sunday to Sunday, overcrowded housing, you couldn't ask for a day off. Dairy workers are a really good example of agriculture workers being subjected to really bad work conditions. If they're sick, they don't get paid. Or they're injured on the job, they don't get paid. It's grueling, back-breaking labor. I grew up in the state of Vermont and really had no idea that this state's most iconic industry is being run almost entirely by immigrant workers. And that puts them at high vulnerability for exploitation and at times human trafficking. Justicia Migrante is an organization de base de trabajadores lecheros hecho por trabajadores para trabajadores. Migrant justice got started after the death of a young farm worker here in Vermont. And that was the beginning when the community decided, well, you know, enough is enough. We needed strong representation, strong leadership, and knowledge about how to win concrete agreements with a corporation. That's why we're so grateful that NCLEJ is by our side when we're negotiating Milk with Dignity Buyers Agreements. The Milk with Dignity program is a very innovative approach being undertaken by migrant justice. They want to put pressure not just on the dairies where they work, but on the companies that buy the milk that they produce. Now the unfortunate part, a lot of the dairy workers, a lot of the organizers are immigrants. So the levers of government are now being used, we think, 
in an unlawful way. Migrant justice has been targeted by ICE, by Border Patrol, by state agencies in retaliation. By having legal protection from NCLEJ, Migrant Justice is able to keep organizing to defend and advance workers' rights. In a city where 30% of the population is living in poverty, when someone goes into the criminal justice system, it's very difficult for them to get out. And over the years, fees and costs get added in, in small increments. Over time, that's built up to where you can come out of a court proceeding for a misdemeanor with a thousand or more dollars in criminal debt. These debts can grow with interest, with fees for collection efforts, and it creates a trap that is next to impossible to escape from. My license had gotten suspended because I had gotten to a point where I didn't have a job. Making a decision of a fine, it's hard when you're trying to make a decision of who's going to eat, how we're going to eat. You can't get yourself back at board's work. You can't get yourself to the doctor. You can't go do anything for your children. What's going on in Tennessee is it's just simply criminalizing being poor. You're basically being pushed further and further down that ladder of poverty until you drop off the face of the earth as far as the state of Tennessee is concerned. We've suspended hundreds of thousands of driver's licenses. It puts people at risk for criminal justice contact just to try to get to work. And often people take the risk, and that becomes its own cycle of debt. Every year, every year, I'm like, if I could just pay $2,000 down, maybe they'll give me my license back. But I actually don't know where to start. Abolition of this policy is the only answer, which is you know, what we're doing with the National Center for Law and Economic Justice. We brought a lawsuit against the state for this practice, and it's the first lawsuit of its kind in Tennessee. The NCLEJ has done this many times in many other places, and they have done work that we could never hope to do. In one instance, the judge has granted a preliminary injunction. This is a remarkable move. This is a, a federal court saying to Tennessee, you must reinstate the licenses of these people. I think it signals this lawsuit will ultimately change this policy. It's like one of the most terrifying experiences of any parent's life when my daughter is having such a hard time breathing, and there's nothing that I can do about it. So I've been doing this work since 2001. We just saw that there were so many kids who live in, in the housing authority who were sick with asthma, ending up in the hospital, and it was just an intractable problem. We just saw the conditions getting worse and worse over time. Seeing my kids constantly going in and out of the hospital, I was sitting here crying because how can I work? when my kids are sick. We've seen situations where there's been an entire wall of the bedroom covered with black mold, and we had to step in. The National Center for Law and Economic Justice, they were disability law experts, and they were the ones who came up with the strategy for using the Americans with Disability Act to compel the housing authority to do these repairs. We went into federal court, we got a consent decree. There's been a major stepping up of efforts to eliminate and resolve mold problems. NCLEJ has been a great partner in this effort. I don't know what we would have done without their expertise every step of the way. They really are giving voice to people who don't have that voice on their own. The National Center in the time that I've been here has been responsible for families being fed. It's been responsible for changes in laws. Collaboration with NCLEJ has been a critical partnership. I've seen a huge impact on the work that the center has done. So many people who come in contact with the criminal justice system are never heard 
NCLEJ brings to these communities an amazing array of legal talent, righting wrongs and steering us toward better policies. The National Center is one of the few organizations really in the country that can do this. They actually want to help people that can't help themselves. I do know change. It doesn't happen all at one time. The fact that there is people that they can see my situation and actually have a, a will to want to do something about it. It makes me feel encouraged, but it also still reminds me that we have a lot more changes that can happen. It is important for individuals to support the work of the National Center for Law and Economic Justice. Litigation is time consuming, expensive. NCLEJ needs support to continue to provide pro bono legal services for organizations like Migrant Justice. Supporting NCLEJ will directly impact somebody in their time of need. We need to have more people working to fight unfair debt. We need to have more people working with low-wage worker organizations. There is no shortage of work to be done. If you want to know that your work is making a difference, you want to support the National Center. Uh, they just don't stop.